So what about gene editing? Um, this is an area that is certainly controversial, but no biologist talking about the future of humanity would be worth their weight in salt uh, if they didn't raise it. This is uh, just a slide to remind me to say that we're looking at the effect of uh, genes and the ability to deliver genes in mammals and, and now in humans to be able to correct but also augment what we were born with. Okay? And I w unless I, hopefully I won't forget to say, so I'll say it now, uh, we are collaborating with George Church on this. So instead of altering the germline, which I think you all know is possible but frowned upon, um, this is another way of doing it. You can use viruses to deliver genes or you can just introduce RNA, which is not going to be a permanent effect. Um, and more and more, we're learning how to do that as well and, and not use viruses. But for now, the FDA allows us to use viruses. Typically, they're used either in the bloodstream or in the eye to correct genetic diseases. And there's a, there's a flood of technologies uh, being developed in this area, and many companies are working on this. So this is an uh, adeno-associated virus that we use in my lab to introduce viruses into an entire old mouse and see what happens. But which genes would you want to use? And so let me tell you a bit about that. Um, so some of the genes that we work on in the lab come from other species. We think that we're not perfect, and some of the best genes are from other animals. And so this is a tardigrade that will survive in outer space for a little bit, in the vacuum of space. Um, so we've got the genome of that. Um, we're cloning, we've cloned genes out of that organism, and we've found genes that seem to protect uh, mammalian cells dramatically against DNA damage. Um, uh, Venkat V, I won't pronounce his last name because it's way too long and difficult, but uh, Venkat works at JPL, so we're collaborating with JPL on their collection of thousands of extremophiles, uh, fungi and bacteria that survive in Chernobyl, out in space, uh, deep uh, in the earth. Um, and Kyle Landry is our expeditionary scientist who goes and finds these extra bugs. He's about to go down a few miles into the, the Earth's crust uh, in the next few weeks. And so together, Kyle and Venkat and his lab uh, are working on finding genes that can augment plants, animals, and humans. One of the bugs we're working on, um, and this in disclosure and, and uh, transparency, is being done at a company out in Worcester, Massachusetts, called Liberty Biosecurity. And this is a company that, uh, or this is a bug, I should say, that is able to survive hundreds, up to a thousand-fold more UV than a typical life form. Um, and so there's a Bacillus pumilo, and it's found all over the spacecraft that come back from space. And this is actually, these are called coupons. They put the, the bacteria on, on these metal strips and they expose them to outer space and look at how long they survive. And Venkat's team has published that these can survive out in space for over a year. So they got something very special about them and we've, we're cloning genes out of that organism as well. But humans have pretty good genes too, and we don't all have the best varieties, but some people do. And so at least 25% of human longevity is genetic. And uh, these families that tend to live a long time, these centenarian families we call them, tend, uh, they have genes and gene variants that we're cloning out. One of these sirtuin genes that I mentioned is actually associated with longevity, number six it's called. And so we're looking at um, making mice. Actually, if you put Cert6 into mice, they live longer. So that's a good news from an ex-postdoc from my lab, Haim Cohen. Um, and so with all that knowledge, we're hoping to be able to fix what we uh, were, were not given by evolution. 